Good morning, everyone. It's always place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. Hey, this helps you. This helps you big time. You understand? I might bounce around today in scripture today, but hey, we'll see. Whatever the flow goes. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. You know, as a follower of Christ, you're going to see a lot of things, people, in this world that don't make sense, make sense, make sense, especially in regards to Scripture. And you're going to have a lot of teachers up there that teach the Word. They claim they teach the Word, but... I'm just telling y'all something. You got to be careful with those people y'all listen to. A lot of them are motivational speakers. They use the word of God to push their agenda. The word of God is supposed to be pushed Christ's agenda, push the Lord's agenda. Because a lot of things they say don't go inside with the word. Let me read this right quick. James chapter 3. My brethren... Be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things will offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is perfect man to behold, and able to also drill the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hymn. Whatsoever the governor go list of it. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it boasts of great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue of our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therefore, with bless we God, even the Father, therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Of the same mouth proceed of blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things are not to be so. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree of my brethren bear olive bears? Are they vine figs? So can no fount fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Now he's talking about the tongue, right? How does this relate to what I'm about to read? You'll see. Let me go back again. My brother, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Be careful how you preach and teach. I'm going to go over to chapter 5 right quick. Now, a lot of people use the word of God for the wrong reasons. Watch this. Go now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. What was the first line in it? Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Now, people love to use the word of God about, about riches, but you better read what the word says. How hard is it for a rich man to inherit the kingdom of God? 
It's a reason why they say this constantly in the Bible. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. Cry and the cries of them which have repeat reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Saboa. You know what people really think got people servants helping for them. I'm gonna give you an example. And they don't take advantage, they, they don't take care of them, they defraud them, they extort them. And these people praying. They humble. They ain't letting the boss man know nothing. Or the rich man. They praying to the Lord. And the Lord heals them. That's why the rich people think they just get away with everything. They can trick to treat people any kind of way. But you know what? Something about the poor. You have lived in pleasures on the earth and been wanting. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of the slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just and he does not resist you. He does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Draw off nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord. For an example of suffering, affliction, affliction and of patience. Now he talked back to the prophets. Behold, you count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any oath. But let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay. Lest ye be fall into condemnation. These words are very clear that's being taught to you here. The word of go back to. Be ye not many masters. Let any among you afflicted, let them pray. Is any merry, let them sing songs. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Or let him who are all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I could go back. Faith. 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 Don't be double minded. Believe. All those play in part too. Elias was a man subject to light passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Read if any do you err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall get save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. How does this relate? I'm telling you, the Bible's telling you, study to show yourself approved. Let's go back to the rich. The word of God is not about riches, people. It's not about heaping up riches for this world. It's about the latter end. You see, when he first started talking about the rich, right? In James chapter 5. And all of a sudden he started talking about patience and affliction and suffering. Do you understand? It makes perfect sense. But people that take these words and block them out. You will never hear a rich man talk, or a woman, really talk about the deceitfulness of riches. You know why, right? Because they are deceived by them. He says, sin is produced when you are drawn away by your own lust. No, people don't think that people lust after money. Lusting after money causes them to sin. They think, you know, they start heaping up for themselves teachers. And having itching ears to hear, they start believing their own lies and their deceits and imagination of their own heart. Then they start spreading those same lies. Because we live in a world where people love being rich. Love being happy. Through riches. But you read through the, the Bible, there's so much about suffering and pain and this and that. And set up a nice good self treasure on earth. The reason I brought this up because I, I stumbled upon a, 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 a video about Steve Harvey. And he quoted scripture about the slugger, the man that folds his hands. You understand? 
But it's basically his concept is the same concept as the whole world. If you want more, you got to work hard for it. Hey, oh, really? You know, um, God doesn't work that way. If you want to worship the work of your own hands, go for it. So I posted a scripture in regards to that. You understand? If you want to go on Facebook, you can see it. But he's talking about the work of a laborer man is sweet. Though he work a little, he sleep. His sleep is good. But he said there's a, a rich man that his riches won't suffer him to sleep. And the whole thing about the video that Steve Harvey was talking about is the rich don't sleep. So me, I done studied this so many times. I done read this so many times. And here this man is talking about how he don't sleep. How he chased after riches. And people will get that. You know drug dealers, most people who sell dope do not sleep. And the Bible says some people can't sleep unless they have done evil. You know, overworking yourself, trying to get ahead is a sin. Do you know that, right? How are you trusting in God? You're trying to trust in your own hands to deliver you. Yes, a man's supposed to work. Supposed to work. You see, the Bible also said time and chance happen us to all. Everybody's not going to be rich. Let's just get that in your mind right now. Everybody's not going to be rich. But everybody like to hear sweet, I mean, sweet, soothing words. Most of these people are soothsayers. They're not prophets. They're not preachers. They're not teachers. They're soothsayers. They like to say soothing and sweet words to you. Falsely. In the name of God. Lure people in through their lust. Sinners produce wind. But men are drawn away by their own lust. You see, I'm sure Stephen Harvey worked hard. I'm sure anybody who's made music probably worked hard. Or at Riches worked hard. But let me tell you something about this world. No telling what they had to sacrifice to get to where they were. They'll tell you this and that. You just got to work hard. But what if God don't want you to have riches? We already know the Bible talks about how riches are deceitful. How they change men. He said a rich has many friends. The Bible said be not friends with the world. You said, do, do you understand? Be careful about these people. Woe to you people, you masters. Be ye not many teachers because they will face the greater condemnation. And you're going to have people get on there and defend them. Defend these motivational speakers. But you're going to have some people who are going to say the truth. Because the kingdom of God is not about riches. He said, seek first heavenly things and all else will be added to you. Did he say work your tail off for that new job or for that music studio? Or did he say any of those things? How will what you desire work once you line up with God? Once you line up with the things he wants you to have, then you'll have to work hard for the desires of your heart. Once you start lining up with what God wants you to do. But they distort that message. They don't talk about people seeking heavenly things. What did he start talking about? Healing folks, helping folks. That's how you step into your purpose. If God decided to make you abundant, he will. But it's not about chasing after abundance. That's what they make it about. Chasing after abundance. Chasing after riches. Be ye not many masters. But all these people, once they get big, they seem to know everything except the truth. They don't want you to be like them. Little children, keep yourself from idols. They don't spread the gospel. They're spreading something else. Prosperity preaching. Motivation. How they get rich in this world. He said, Lo, he labor 
little, he sleep good. That was the proverb said. But a rich man won't suffer him to sleep. And he said it out of his own horse's mouth. Huh? You can go on my Facebook profile and see what he's talking about. He said it out of his own mouth. God is not expecting you to do that. Chasing after riches and chasing after fame or fortune. He wants you to chase after the children of God. That's what he wants you to do. Trying to win souls. That's what he wants you to do. Right? That's what he wants you to do. Heavenly things. Not about the new car. Don't seek after those things. Do you hear me? The Lord's prayer didn't in, in, involve nothing with riches. Read Psalms. You have we rarely hear Psalms talking about how rich I am or how I worked hard to get rich. I'm just paying pay attention, read your Bibles. It's never been about that. All about preparation. Preparing the people, preparing yourself. If riches increase, set not your mind on them. Okay, that sums it up right there. Why? Because you're supposed to set your mind on heavenly things. So why are you setting your mind on riches increasing? Or well, you think speaking into existence is going to work? Ha <laughs> ha! You know, every rich person got a story of how they became rich. Then they spread that story and they tell other people you can get rich just like me it might not work for them that way follow your dreams they got comedians out there who are not funny <laughs> and that's the truth follow your dreams the desires of your heart and they get up there and they realize they're not a comedian so that dream of being a comedian is not worth it. Because you know what? God has a better plan for you. A plan that lines up with his will for your life. Not chasing after monetary, not chasing after riches or glory or people to worship you. But people are not teaching the word correctly, people. You know why? Because they are under the sway of the evil one. They have a form of God in this, denying the one that How is Steve Harvey denying God? Let me show you. You got to work your butt off. Hmm. <laughs> Think about Egypt, though. They never had to do anything, people. They didn't have to work too much. What did they have to do? Walk. Get fed. Stick to God's plan, stick to God's will. Other than that, what else did they have to do? Think Moses. What did he have to do? Was he chasing after riches? No. Stick to God's plan, lead my people. I got you. I will provide. Abraham, I'm going to make you start a country. He didn't make him rich so he could gloat about it. He wanted to start a new country. Joseph wasn't rich to be boastful. He didn't even ask for riches. He didn't work hard for riches. He worked hard according to his purpose. People love to talk about Joseph's story and all the other stories of Solomon's story. Did Solomon work hard for his riches? No, he inherited them. And people would just give to him. You see, don't let this world confuse you people. These people are not of God. They want you out there breaking your back trying to make a dollar. But they don't want you out there breaking your back spreading the truth of the gospel. Let me pause and I will continue.